Welcome again, everyone, and thanks for your patience. We appreciate your time, the time you're taking out of your busy schedule to join us today for this interactive session, and we'll do our best to make sure we provide value throughout the session. My name is Allison Gonzalez, and I am your host today, although John Anderson from Casio, who I will introduce shortly, will be doing most of the heavy lifting. We hope to make this session as interactive as possible, so please use the question and answer feature to pose questions throughout the session. We will do our best to answer any questions before the end of the session, and any questions we can't answer today, we will get back to you within the next 24 hours. We will be recording the session today and providing the link to you to the recording to you within the next 48 hours. To just go over what we will be covering today, starting with our poll questions that are currently still posted. If you have not already, please go ahead and answer the poll questions as I'll be taking them down shortly. I will be introducing myself and my role as well as tell you a little bit more about Trox. From there, I will introduce John Anderson as he takes it away. Once John is finished, we will review what is next and, off to, and end off with some Q&A. I thought we can spend a couple minutes telling you a little bit about the new trucks. For the last eight months, we have been working to bring together two great ed tech companies in order to provide the best value to IT managers, teachers, students, and administrators. We are happy to let you know this work has led to the creation of trucks a company focused on helping educators engage curious minds and improve learning outcomes. Trox provides a complete technology ecosystem with one goal in mind, improving learning outcomes. This focus demands the best of ourselves, our partners, our products, our services, and our processes. We drive everything with passion, people, and purpose. We will work hand in hand with educators to connect students to a, lo to a love of learning and set them on the path of lifelong achievement. The, merger com the merged company now serves more than 70 million students across North America. More than a third of all districts buy through us and we provide a full breadth of ed tech solutions. We work with more than 500 technology partners with a wealth of experience in all areas of ed tech. We are providing leading edge, best in class solutions in a wide spectrum of areas, including all areas in AV solutions, which includes projector solutions for all of your requirements for the, for the classroom, meeting room, and auditoriums, solution, audio solutions for all of your requirements from classroom solutions to school safety systems, digital displays, now trending in education, both in classrooms and throughout the school for digital communication, Interactive flat panels, one of the fastest growing sectors we see in education. Accessories, including mounts, carts, table, cables, anything you need to complete your AV requirements. We also provide design and installation service if, you are, if they are required. No job too big or too small. One-to-one -one learning solutions include a wide variety of tier one brand devices for students and teachers, both new and recertified. Design and deployment services, industry best warranty cover options, trade-in programs, ed tech as a service offerings, device and classroom management tools, a huge catalog of professional development offerings. Collaborative learning includes STEM offerings, furniture, esports, applications, and tools to enhance student engagement and improve social emotional learning. We have specific solutions to help educators manage their assets or improve campus safety. Above and beyond the great products we sell, we provide a full suite of related services to assure our customers have a great experience and get the most out of their technology investments. This is about the students and improving their learning outcomes. My role at the organization is to provide support to our sales force and their customers. I work with customers like yourselves to understand your need with your needs with the ed tech manufacturers to support best of class solutions we offer for the needs we see in the classrooms of our customers. I think it's safe to say that with that the benchmark in almost every solution we offer is will this improve student engagement and learning outcomes. Regardless of how cool the technology is, can this actually impact critical elements. I think we all know that it's harder than ever to find something compelling enough to grab students' attention, considering all of the technology they are surrounded with. As classrooms continue to integrate technology, digital content, and the internet into the classrooms, 
Instructors, instructors need tools that facilitate easier, more efficient teaching styles. With the modern classroom, it becomes necessary to reduce restrictions on the classroom layout and the teaching tools. By doing so, we ensure the student engagement that allows the student to collaborate and allows the teachers to have an impactful learning outcome. Collaborative functions simplify operation and expedite smooth classroom instruction, enabling flexible teaching styles that encourage greater student participation and allows teachers to coordinate lessons closely with students and strengthen interactive communication. With that, I'm gonna pass this off to someone who actually knows what he's talking about, our expert today, John Anderson from Casio. Our product line and go into uh, little details and introduce some uh, of our um, features that you may or may not know. Um, so go ahead, we can go to the next slide. So, um, you know, Casio is a household name. We've been around for a long time. Everybody's pretty familiar with it. We make a lot of different products. Uh, we've made projectors for many years. Uh, we used to make lamp-based projectors. In 2010, we designed the first lamp-free hybrid projector. Um, so right now we're in our 10th year of making lamp-free projectors and leading the market. So uh, we have, uh, we're manufactured in Japan since 2014, 100% um, lamp-free, no mercury, and we have uh, approximately 20 models. Um, so there's something for everybody. Um, and I'm gonna let, let you know how you would be able to save money um, with not only being lamp-free, but um, you know, some of the features that we have built into the product at no additional cost. Um, so go ahead. So this is our um, laser LED hybrid light source. Uh, it's very robust and um, last years. I mean, our benchmark is 20,000 years, but it, it lasts much longer than that. Um, we've had projectors in here that came out of various projects that are over the 20,000 mark. So, so it's not like the 20,000 hours is the end. Um, so right out of the box, they use 30% less power and as much as 50% less power. Uh, the long light source of 20,000 hours uh, means you'll get many, many years uh, as like on the average, you probably get between 10 and as many as 18 years of um, use with maintenance free. Uh, they produce very little heat. Um, and the heat, as you know, is, is very damaging to components over time. So the fact that there's no heat or very minimal heat, uh, doesn't really affect any of the in internal uh, components. Um, no mercury means they're safer in classrooms. Or, you know, if, if you have a new building, especially, everybody wants to go green and go with an efficient product that, that is uh, not only energy efficient, but uh, does not have any dangerous, um, emit any dangerous chemicals or, or have contents that are dangerous. Um, quick on. So, I mean, it's, it's a solid state projector. So when you turn it on in approximately five seconds, you're up and running. Lamp-based projectors not only produce heat, but there's a, a warm up and a cool down. And, um, you know, sometimes that can take or feel like it takes very long. So five seconds, you're just, you know, up and running. So with lamps, every single time you fire up your projector, that lamp loses brightness and quality. Um, and that is why the, you have a long warm up and a long cool down. That's actually to protect the lamp. Um, but lamps ha have limited, they've gotten better over the years, 
but it's really old technology um, and rapidly disappearing. Lamps usually, today it can be as many as, you might see uh, three or ma as many as 5,000 hours, but in general, uh, two to 2,500, you know, you're gonna get a little notification on your projector saying that it's time to replace the lamp. So every single time you, you start and stop that, the, the image quality degrades. So imagine if your uh, projectors are turned on and off every single day, you're gonna lose quality, image quality, right up until that time the, the uh, bulb replacement needs to be done. At the same time, most people, when they replace the bulb, since you're gonna be up on a ladder, um, you know, doing that, you know, it's a lot of times you're just going to replace the filter. So our projectors have no bulbs or no filters and 15 year, 15 to 18 years in a school environment, no downtime, no labor costs. And, and the thing is with the uh, um, laser LED hybrid light source, the degradation of the image quality is stretched out over that 18 years. So it's, uh, it's really not noticeable like a, a bulb. When a bulb starts to go bad, the image quality is, is really not very good. Um, with hours after years and years of use, you're still gonna you know, have, have a nice uh, bright image. So uh, also the other thing, you know, like not only do bulbs generate a lot of electricity and, and um, you know, this is a low estimate, but like bulbs, 277 watts, most projectors that have bulbs not only produce a lot of heat, but I've seen many projectors that are over 340 watts. That means the electric meter spinning around, anything that generates, uh, heat, uh, almost like a portable heater, um, it's going to generate and use a lot of electricity. Our projectors are like as, as much as 50% lower, 30% right out of the box. So it's very um, energy efficient uh, and low power consumption. Um, and, and obviously, if you multiply that across uh, many projectors, uh, that's a big savings. Also, if the projectors are in standby mode, they use less than one watt and, and no heat. So um, one of the other advantages are that the projectors don't use filters. Um, we're able to isolate the optical block. Um, it's done differently and across a couple different models, but uh, nevertheless, it's still, it prevents uh, dust from entering and you know obviously if you got dust on the optics it would degrade the image so we were able to isolate that um, so there's no image degradation and there's no filters filters cost about 15 roughly dollars per um, you know filter so if, if a school is stocking bulbs or stocking filters um, that's a lot of money just sitting on the shelf waiting to be replaced, especially many schools use multiple brands because they keep switching brands over the years. So now they're stocking bulbs for and filters for many different brands. So, um, you know, by not having to do that, you know, with the dust resistant design, there's no filters to clean, there's no filters to buy and stock, there's no labor costs to change out those filters. So overall, it's just much easier. It's uh, you know, very minimal maintenance um, overall. You don't, you know, have to really do much of anything besides set it and forget it. You know, we recommend um, just generally dusting like you would do anything um, or, or dust a ceiling fan, you know, just uh, at least uh, once a month. Um, but aside from that, there's, you know, you're going to save a lot of money. So this is uh, just showing the low total cost of ownership. Um, there's uh, many different ways you can calculate this, but you know if you do a side-by-side -side comparison with the uh, projector cost 
um, the amount of lamps over the life of that projector, the amount of filters, the amount of labor, the amount of electricity. Once you compare that side by side, it, it's a pretty big savings. And not only that, it's much easier to maintain, uh, you know, depending on, say, say, if you have 300 projectors, it's much easier to maintain those projectors that need minimal to no maintenance um, or labor to have to constantly be changing out and changing bulbs and filters. You know, between all the money that you would save um, in power, the cost of bulbs and filters, um, and the cost of labor, uh, and the downtime in the classroom, it's, it's uh, quite a big savings. And everybody that's really adopted our product loves it, and they come back to us and, you know, tell us that, which is, is good. Go ahead, you can go to the next one. So this is what I was talking about before. Projectors take, a, you know, lamp-based projectors take a long time to warm up. And when you're waiting for that, it feels very long. Um, and even when, it, even when it turns on, some older bulb-based projectors may not achieve maximum brightness, believe it or not, up, it's like I've, I've read as much as like a half hour which seems kind of ridiculous. Um, with ours, because it is solid state, you know, you can turn it on and, you know, within five seconds, um, you know, you're up and running at full brightness. Um, the other thing Casio is uh, really aware of, um, you know, with our green initiatives is, um, how harmful mercury is and they're adamant about removing uh, and making it uh, really all of their products, not just projectors, but they try to make all of their products very sustainable. And they also, uh, you know, especially in, in the school environment or, or anywhere, usually when you have projectors in a meeting room, you're in a, an enclosed room. So the last thing you want is uh, a bulb that, you know, if a bulb was to break, obviously it has mercury content in there. That's the last thing that you would want in a classroom. So, um, you know, 10 years ago, we saw this was the future. And that's why, um, you know, we, you know, we started out with one projector and the following year we went across the whole line because it was such a successful, um, you know, type of technology versus the lamps. Uh, initially, uh, um, many of our products were made, or parts of the products were made in China. Um, so in 2014, um, our products uh, were moved to Japan. Um, so not only do we have more control over quality and supply, but um, TAA compliant for GSA sales. The other thing that's great about our projectors is the warranty is, is one of the best in the business. Um, five years uh, parts and labor on all advanced, ultra short throw and superior for the education channel. Um, there's only slight differences on the models um, below, but you know, you gotta figure five years or 10,000 hours on a bulb. I mean, that's half the life uh, half of 20,000 hours is, a, is many, many years. Um, so it's, it's a really good warranty. Um, you know, and, and our reliability rate is, is very good. There's minimal moving, pro, uh, moving parts in the projector because it's solid state, you know, so uh, you have very, very low failure rates. So, um, you know, a lot of schools uh, have been over the years opting for flat panels and, you know, flat panels, I have nothing against flat panels because they do work in some environments, but when you have a flat panel, it's basically going to stay that whatever size you bought it and it's hung on the wall, it's not going to change size. Whereas a projector, you can get, um, you know, easily a 300 inch image um, 
just by moving the projector or depending on the zoom range or the throw range of the projector, you know, you can really achieve a large image. Flat panels look good. Everybody has a flat panel in their house. So people feel comfortable when they're making that purchase, but it's usually after they make that purchase, they find out that it may not be the best solution in the teaching environment. Um, and a good, um, everybody here has been to a doctor or wears glasses. So if you've ever read an eye chart, you know, those lines on the bottom get very difficult to read. And that's sort of what happens if you're sitting in the back from, from probably the fourth or fifth row back on a flat screen, it'd be very difficult to read anything that's small. You know, it might be okay for watching a movie, but uh, anytime you have graphics, um, you figure, you know, in a classroom, it, you know, where you have lettering or chemistry or science, uh, math, and, you know, anything that has small things to look at, um, when you have content like that, what people, the teacher ends up doing is having to zoom in on every single thing they're trying to highlight because people in the back of the class can't see that. And that's really not. Uh, an issue with a projector. You know, there's there's um, formulas for this um, as far as how far back and the size of the screen and and you know the the idea behind teaching is not leaving anybody out. And if half your class uh, is having trouble learning because they can't truly see the content, that's not good. And you know. For the most part, um, you know, you don't have that issue with projectors um, because, again, depending on, on the throw distance and the size of the whiteboard or the screen, you can get very large images. And the other thing, <clears throat> you know, projectors, of course, they have special cabling uh, that needs to be ran. They need, a, you know, mounts. Uh, most schools already have a lot of those installed, so projectors can, many projectors can just be swapped out with, with the existing mounts. Flat screens, uh, you know, you're not, you're not buying something you would get in a retail store. When you get a flat screen, um, you know, you're buying a commercial grade flat screen, which is quite a bit more than a projector. Um, the other side of that is commercial flat screens are you know, hard to handle for one person. Uh, they're a bit heavier than some of these uh, retail store low cost TVs. They still need special mounts. They still need special wiring. Um, so they need all that same thing. And although, the, you know, overall image looks good, you know, the largest screen, you know, you're really going to see is maybe 86 inch. Um, and I've seen many schools use smaller than that. And, uh, you know, there's only one solution. You're either going to have to get more flat panels, which means you're going to spend two or three times <clears throat> the initial cost. Or if something happens to that flat panel, if it uh, decides it it is no longer working for some reason or <clears throat> the screen cracks or anything that where it needs service, it's a little more difficult to remove and, you know, because now you have this larger rectangle shaped item. Uh, whereas a projector, usually schools um, keep, you know, a spare, like you're not replacing bulbs and you can just, you know, swap it out and more than likely it's going to be under warranty so it can just be swapped out very easily so you can see the cost per inch uh, versus any a flat panel versus projection um, you know there's really no comparison you know when you're when you think the end result of what you're doing as a teacher is trying to get all your students to comprehend what's going on in the classroom and by doing that uh you know you're spending more on a flat screen 
The other thing with flat screens is, you know, schools, kids, you know, like there's, you know, if the flu is going around or a cold or a virus is going around, if you have people touching uh, a display, uh, you know, there's a lot of things. You have germs that accumulate on the screen. You have glare, <clears throat> many different things. And ultimately you're paying more per square inch for ultimately a smaller, less visible product. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, again, with projectors, you know, they, flat panels may work in some environments in a small collaboration environment, but in a large classroom or a large conference room or, or a lecture hall or anything like that, flat panels are not really the, the best solution. So, you know, as everybody's aware, <clears throat> classroom learning has been changing over the years. And, you know, the need for um, more flexible learning, um, you know, has changed. And you can see that really all over the world. Um, it's no longer just the standardized classroom, you know, that, that most people think of. You know, things are just, there's more collaboration going on today. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to achieve that. So, you know, one our solution that we offer is called um, it's an education solution. It's um, one click connection. Um, it connects very easily. It's very easy to use in the class, um, during class, and at the end of class. There's benefits. Um, you know, when, when we did a lot of uh, data collection and surveys and talked to a lot of people, and, you know, this is our solution that we're offering. And by the way, this is included with the product. <coughs> Many very similar solutions. Um, there's solutions that are in the hundreds of dollars and thousands of dollars that offer a very similar type of thing. This, uh, this is great because it's, it's just built in to the projector. And uh, it, I'll get into this a little bit more, but um, it's, it's pretty good as far as being quick to connect and easy to use. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Um, you can hook it up different ways. Um, you can connect with, uh, a router if you have an existing router you can uh, we have a USB wireless dongle um, there's many ways to set it up and and connect and it's got uh, different security settings um, there's you know uh, it makes it easy for not only the person connecting or a teacher to set it up uh, or the IT people to uh, pre set everything up you know so you know once once it's set up um and it would, like i said it's very relatively painless to set up once it's set up i mean the connection is super quick and and very easy and secure you know a, a lot of um you know people with a lot of different connections uh, that are offered out there, especially the the ones that um, are a little more expensive. You know, some of these um, still, you know, you still have all the same issues uh, that may be related to Wi-Fi, or they're more difficult to set up, or or there's you know so many passwords every time somebody logs in and in and out. Um, it, it becomes very cumbersome, and as you know, um, teachers. You know, if, if something's difficult to use, uh, or it's difficult to, difficult to connect, or the person that's setting up, if you know, if it's difficult, it, it basically they don't want to use it. <clears throat> and if if you know, although our feature is free, if if it's something that's unusable, you know, it's it, it, it's not good. So you know, imagine if you were to spend uh, a few thousand dollars. I mean, you could spend from hundreds of dollars to 
over a thousand dollars um, for solution, and that's per classroom, uh, where hours is included in the projector. So if you bought the projector and it's in, it's very easy to set up. Um, there's multiple ways for like an IT person to set it up by pre-generating connections. Um, and, you know, overall, it, you'll see, uh, I will get into this a little bit more. I'm not going into total detail on it, but, you know, it's just to let you know that it is a free solution <clears throat> and it's very fast. So one of the things people were requesting, <clears throat> excuse me, is the they wanted to be able to moderate students. Um, as you know, you know if, if every everybody in the classroom is trying to connect, um, the teacher wants some kind of control. So by doing this, the teacher is able to walk around with a phone or a tablet, <clears throat> and you can view any four screens at once simultaneously on the screen, but it allows the teacher to go around and make any screen full screen and um, close somebody out, bring in somebody new, uh, it, you know, so ha having that control and knowing what's gonna be going up on the screen before it happens uh, is, is good. And that was like one of the requests that we got when we came up with the solution. Um, it also has other built-in functions. Um, one of them is you can remotely control your PC. Um, if you're, say, have a tablet and you're walking around the room, it's going to give you that ability. Um, many teachers today just use a tablet um, because it's just more compact and easier to to walk around the room and interact with the students. Um, the other thing it has, <clears throat> if you mi misplace the remote for the projector, there's a way for the teacher to go in and access the remote um, within the app. So, the, you know, it, it's very convenient, um, not only from uh, a way to moderate the students in the classroom, but it ha has some other good built-in features. So uh, the idea behind coming up with the solution was uh, total support um, from the beginning to end. So one click connection makes the whole process easy when you walk into the classroom uh, to reduce time and try to figure out how to get up and running um, during class when you know the moderator function allows the teacher to be in control. Um, and you know it, it makes collaboration between the teacher and the students a little easier and the teacher can be a little uh more comfortable by knowing who you know what content uh, they're going to allow on the screen um, and also at the end of class so when you finish you can virtually unplug from your pc and walk out of the room and uh, when the projector will sense no input within a certain allotted time, the projector will go into standby mode. So that's, a, again, saving power. When the next person comes in, they can just plug in their computer and be ready to roll and be up and running. So it, it simplifies the whole, um, you know, for the next uh, teacher coming in, getting set up. Um, and then there's some addition additional features um, you know, within the projector and within the app. So um, one of the newest projectors we came out with was the first WUXGA high brightness lamp free projector and uh, it's 4,000 lumens. The image quality is, is great. It's um, very bright. It's got a 1.7 optical zoom, which means it's, uh, going to fit, if you have existing mounts, you, it's it's going to be an easier fit because of that zoom range. It has, uh, it also has the hybrid light source, but it's uh, 
slightly different than uh, the previous generation of projectors. Um, and this one's available in uh, four different models. Um, and, and basically, uh, they're all 4,000 lumens. It's basically, uh, as you can see, WXGA, uh, or you're gonna have a, um, a LAN with an RJ45, uh, or the WUXGA, and then the wireless uh, LAN. It's got dual uh, HDMI, dual USB, um, it has RCA inputs, it has audio inputs, it's got um, uh, serial and um, computer inputs. Um, so it, it's got pretty much everything you need. It's, it just boils down to if you need a network model or um, the WUXGA. The uh, light source in, in the Superior series uh, is very similar to uh, the previous generation. They, the really the main addition was the addition of a red LED. So you have a blue laser, a phosphor wheel, and uh, the addition of the uh, red laser uh, basically gives you, gives you um, more natural color tones um, and overall better image. And the dust resistant design in this model is slightly different than the other one. The other projectors have a three block system. This is a two block system. So uh, it's able to cool everything um, inside uh, with still avoiding everything in the optics. Um, the cool air uh, is drawn in and, and cools the heat sinks and, and the power supply and everything. And that exhaust flow, again, filter free, um, projectors are uh, not, not loud. Um, they have uh, some really good built-in features on the remote as well as on board the projector. Um, so they're much easier to use. You don't have to go into a difficult to navigate menu. So this is what I was talking about with the um, Zoom the 1.7 inch, uh, 1.7 times zoom allows you to, uh, you know, have more uh, variation of the mount distance. Um, and, you know, you're more able to fit existing uh, mounts that are in the classroom. Uh, our other projectors, um, there's different zoom ranges available, which I'll get into, but 1.7 is a pretty good um, zoom range to, uh, you know, if you, especially if you have mounts in the class and you just want to be able to swap out a projector. So uh, this is again, uh, referring to the educational solution, that just the, the ease of time uh, it takes to set up, um, the, you know, how much easier it is to uh, switch from unit to unit, you know, there's a lot of different BYO devices. Um, so the connection uh, works really well. Um, and it, it's like it doesn't only work with one type of Windows, um, Mac, Android, Chromebook, a lot of schools use Chromebook. So that was important. Um, it's just a, a good overall solution. So the um, projectors in our core and advanced series, um, we have like pretty much everything uh, with 20 different models to choose from. If you just need straight projection uh, and you don't need all the bells and whistles or a lot of um, things that you're not gonna use, you're just gonna plug in and, and pretty much project straight forward. Those are the core series and uh, they're available on three different models uh, with different lumen ranges, <clears throat> but it's, it's very basic. The onboard controls are, are much more basic, but the cost of the projector is, is very low. So if, if your budget is minimal and you're trying to start off with lamp-free, uh, this is a good place to start. 
the advanced series um, has pretty much all the bells and whistles um, also available in different lumen ranges, um, but a lot of onboard connectivity as you can see. So it, the core series, you can see we have a V2, a 110X, a 100W, and a 110W. Um, the core V2 is really the uh, entry level. Um, but, you know, if, if that's all you need and that will um, be good enough um, for what you require, that's a great uh, introduction into it. Um, you know, it's low price. But, you know, keep in mind, you know, minimal connectability. It's, it's really a serial computer. Um, the zoom range is, is only a 1.1 zoom, but it is 3,000 lumens and it is XGA resolution. Um, and a, as it steps up, you know, you have a 1.5 times zoom. Um, and the lumen range varies from uh, 3,000, 33, and 3,500 lumens. Advanced series, uh, again, the lumens range, you have 33 to 3,500 XGA or WXGA. They all have 1.5 optical zoom. They all have the hybrid light source. Uh, all of our projectors in the whole line are lamp free, no bulbs, no filters. So, so you're, you know, no matter what model you choose, uh, you know, you're gonna get a great product that lasts a long time. You know, it's just ultimately everybody has different need and that's why we offer so many different models. We also have ultra short throw. So we offer three different models in that, the uh, UT312 WN, which uh, has a wireless network, the 352W and the 352WN. So you can see, you know, there's a lot of um, inputs, everything you might need, um, you know, from dual USB to dual computer, serial, um, you also have um, a mic input uh, on, on many of our projectors. Um, they all have, uh, a lot of these have 16 watt built in speaker, which is pretty good and pretty loud. Um, and ultra short throws are pretty common in most classrooms today. Uh, this is one that's been very popular. We've been making this projector for a long time. Um, very. It's only about five pounds. It's about the size of a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and uh, 1.7 inches thick. It's uh, available in 2,500 and 3,000 lumens. It has a two time power zoom and focus and also available in XGA and WXGA. Um, and, you know, it, it again, it's like whether you need something that's portable that you can carry with you, um, or sometimes libraries will loan out projectors. Sometimes they choose to use these, but because it has a two time power zoom, um, you know, you can get up to a, a, a very large screen. And then we also have a 4K Ultra HD, um, the L8300HN, it's a 5,000 lumen projector. 4K UHD, 8.3 million pixels on the screen, uh, full color. Uh, this has a 1.5 manual focus, uh, has two HDMI, HD base T. It also has a screen trigger if you have an electric screen and uh, RJ45 uh, jack for uh, LAN. <laughs> and that basically, um, ends the presentation, you know, but just to reinforce uh, the whole lineup is, again is lamp free, filter free, 30% uh, uh, less power right out of the box, uh, really no maintenance, um, pretty much can, can mount it and, uh, you know, have uh, a maintenance free projector that lasts many years in the classroom. Thank you, John, so much. That was very informative. Lots of information to take in there. Okay, so we're going to talk about what's next as we close up this presentation. So, of course, if you want to learn more about 
uh, the Castillo projectors and the offerings. We do offer one-on-one -on -one discussions to examine your specific needs for projectors. So if you would like to do that, your next step is to contact your Trox account executive. If you do not know who your account executive is, you can absolutely email me and just put Casio in the subject line and my contact information is there for you, okay? We're gonna end it off with some Q&A. So we currently don't have any questions in the queue, but I do wanna give just a quick five minutes to allow our attendees to ask any questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself. And if you'd like to ask any questions, go feel free to head. All right, John, it looks like you were incredibly informative and nobody has any questions today. Okay, so if any other questions come up, of course, reach out. Um, John, did you have anything to add before we close up today? No, um, yeah. If, if you have interest in, in the product, definitely contact your Troxel representative. Um, you know, we can, <clears throat> if you're interested in, in a demo uh, or checking one out so you can, you know, see if it meets your needs or look at it up close and, and uh, you know, that's, you can easily get that uh, done through any of your Troxel people. Um, but it, it's, if you haven't tried Lamp Free yet, I mean, you really, should check it in, out. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you everybody for joining us today and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, John. Thank you.